what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we shall discuss on what lessons can we learn from this famous character from the ramayana whose name is indrajit yes he is the eldest of the sons of ravana and he he's so powerful my god i used to like this character very much when i first uh, knew about this person yes but unfortunately like so many other characters on the side of ravana he also met the dead end because he was on the side of evil all right so let us see what this person is trying to teach us and if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and before i begin as i always say and today i must say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him otherwise indrajit will catch you <laughs> All right so Indrajit as we know his name was Meghnath when he was born why why was his name Meghnath because it is said when he was born there was as in hindi they say na Megho ka garajna there was thunder <laughs> yes it is said the demigods were fearful oh my god what will happen ravana's son is born now so there was a very tumultuous sound in the entire universe when he was born and because of that his name was meghnath yes and later on he also had defeated indra the king of the heavens and he was so powerful that he had captured indra in his palace and then lord brahma appeared to him and said my dear indrajit it's high time <laughs> please give back indra because the management uh, and the affairs of the heavenly planets are getting halted it's getting disturbed because the king of the heavens is not there he is in your jail and then indrajit said that i will give him back there's no problem but what will i get in return <laughs> he was the perfect businessman see he's doing business with lord brahma also the creator of the universe then brahma ji said that oh i will give you two benedictions the first benediction is that you will have this name indrajit one who has defeated indra which means from today everybody will know you as indrajit yes my god what a fame what a name the one who defeated the king of the heavens and the other ben benediction is that when you uh, do the worship of your kul devi nikumbhala and you follow the procedures which have been entitled there in the scriptures then you shall get a divine chariot and you will become invincible and nobody will be able to defeat you in warfare so these are the benedictions which brahma had given and then indrajit said okay 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 so be it take indra <laughs> actually ravan had almost lost the fight with indra once and then indrajit had when indrajit went and he uh, twisted ravana's defeat into victory see so powerful he was so powerful my god invincible there are some sources which also say he was more powerful than ravana himself i mean he was not in a literal sense but the way he used to fight and the way he used to win it appeared that even he has surpassed his father who was almost indefeatable yes ravana was indefeatable he he nobody could conquer him except lord ram of course so he was the eldest of ravana's sons and ravana had so many sons um, he had indrajit then devantak then narantak then atikai then prahast then akshay so many of these were there and uh, atikai was the son of uh, his second wife uh, what was his name dhanyamalini yes and indrajit's mother is mandodri yes mandodri is one of the great ladies in the scriptures so indrajit he also had the power that he could capture hanuman ji of course he did not capture hanuman ji hanuman ji uh, himself decided to uh, be captured so that he could see what's going on in ravana's army but externally he had the honor that yes i captured hanuman ji <laughs> nobody can capture hanuman he is shiva himself he is one of the avatars yes 11th rudra as we know and he is the foremost servitor of lord ram so nobody can capture hanuman ji but externally he also had that royalty yes i am the one who had captured hanuman also so then he had also paralyzed ram and lakshman once when he had used the nagpash over them and then later on garuda had come and 
taken off that poison and again the next time he had also paralyzed Lakshman when he used a special weapon which he had because of which the Dronagiri Parvat was to be brought from the Himalayas and then that is how Lakshman survived. So he was an extraordinary warrior. He had the knowledge of almost every divine weapon, the Vyastra which was there in the universe that time. He was extraordinarily powerful. But this video is not on the power of Indrajit. <laughs> this video is on the lessons which he is trying to teach us. Indrajit, like Kumbhakarna, Kumbhakarna was who? Ravana's brother, right? We all know about him. Kumbhakarna and Indrajit are kind of similar in many ways. Indrajit also belongs to that category. Hum kabhi nahi sudhrenge. Should I repeat in Hindi? Hum kabhi nahi sudhrenge. <laughs> Actually, that is more of Kumbhakarna. But Indrajit also personifies this. That because the difference between Indrajit and Kumbhakarna is that Kumbhakarna knew from day one who Ram, who Ram is, who Sita is. And he goes on warning Ravana repeatedly when Ravana forcefully wakes Kumbhakarna up that now it is time for you to fight, defend Lanka. Then he says, my dear brother, what have you done? Your one, this one act of yours will lead to the destruction of the entire dynasty of Pulastya Rishi. Please give back Sita. <laughs> And then Ravana says, oh, I have not uh, woken you up to hear lectures, yes, on what is right or wrong. If you can't fight, if you're tired, if you're fearful, if you're lazy, go to sleep. I will fight myself. So Kumbhakarana knew from day one who Ram was. He knew that Lord Ram is supreme personality of Godhead himself, Vishnu himself. And Sita Devi is the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi herself. So Lakshmi can only stay with Narayan. Lakshmi will not stay with anybody, yes, other than Narayan. So, please return Lakshmi to Narayan. That is what Kumkarna suggested. But all his efforts in vain. Ravana didn't listen. Now, Indrajit, he was so much obsessed with his father's power, prowess, position, name, fame, authority, strength, that he actually believed that Ravana can kill Ram. That was his problem. He had too much faith on his father, <laughs> which he should have not had. Because eventually he also realized, eventually the Ramayan says that uh, Indrajit also realized at the end of course, just before he was about to die. Because he had used many celestial weapons on Lakshman and none of them worked. Why? Because Lakshman is not an ordinary person, he is Anand Shesh himself, he is the one on whom Lord Vishnu lies down. That is why that song is there in, in that part. In Vishnu Sastanam it comes Shuklam Varadharam Vishnum Shashi Varanam Shatur Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Varanam Dhyayet Sarva Vigno Pashantayet <laughs> So of course we can read the Vishnu Sastanam it's very long so I will not go to that here but uh, that says that uh, that snake which is there yes it has millions and billions and trillions and unlimited number of hoods Bhujangasan yes that asan which is there uh, that also comes from that word only, right? So, that's the beauty of Lakshman. How can you kill him? You cannot kill him. It's not possible. So, all the arrows of the, or not arrows, all the divine weapons of the demigods, they surrendered when they came to came near to Lakshman. And then, Lakshman, uh, nothing happened to him. And then, Indrajit understood that he is not an ordinary personality. He is God himself. So I cannot defeat him. It's not possible. So he went to Ravana at the end and he said, My dear father, that's it. Ram is Vishnu himself. <laughs> you cannot defeat him. Give back Sita. He also tells this like Kumbhakarana said. But Ravan says, Oh, it seems you are tired. Go to sleep. Your father is there alone enough to fight. Don't worry, I will fight on, on behalf of Lanka. I don't need people like you. <laughs> and then Indrajit says, No, no, I will not let you fight. I just came here to give you good advice. But all his efforts in vain. He didn't listen. Ravana rejects the advice which Indrajit gives him. And then what happens? Later on, Indrajit, his head is chopped off. So... He's a very, uh, he's a very, he was a very obedient son. 
he was the perfect son but the only problem was he was obedient to a wrong person yes kumbhakarna was also the perfect brother but again they were submissive to the wrong authority so that is what indrajit also teaches in the ramayana that just because you are a son just because you are a brother like kumbhakarna or vibhishan maybe <laughs> or sutlaka sister it doesn't mean you have to be subordinate yes to somebody who is on the path of adharma i religion like many a times we take to some spiritual practice and then our elder brother may not support that our father may not support that our mother may not support that then what do we do we leave them right <laughs> no, no 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 we don't have to leave them but we have to understand that they will never sometimes sometimes if your higher authorities are obstructing you you have to understand that they will their obstruction will continue and they will not do good to us in those lines i mean they may care for our body or for our wealth and money that is fine but when we are taking to some spiritual path then it can happen that they are obstructing and during that time we have to understand that we cannot keep listening to them because if we keep listening to them if we try to if we try to do what they say which means if they said oh don't go to this satsang program don't give up me don't do this don't do these malas don't chant these mantras yes then if we like indrajit if we foolishly obediently listen to them it will lead to the destruction of our entire life so whoever they are they can be our father or mother or our elder brother yes anybody they can be but if they are not supporting our spiritual practices whatever we are doing then we have to still continue doing them like vibhishan did so this is the difference between kumbhakarna and indrajit and vibhishan yes vibhishan knew what is right and he went and did what is right he went and sided with lord ram that's the beauty of vibhishan but unfortunately indrajit could not do that because he was falsely attached to his father yes that is false attachment that that's that's brutal attachment actually that's not love love means to do what is good for the person irrespective of the person likes it or he doesn't but indrajit he could not do that he only did what his father wanted and he also met his dead end at the end so that's that's the sad part that indrajit is teaching us that many a times it can happen that we might know what is right but still we end up doing what is wrong just because we are attached to somebody right some family member some people here there are some friends oh somebody is pulling us for party we know what they are going to do there in the party right <laughs> but still we go there because that person will feel bad so this is what indrajit is trying to teach us that don't destroy yourself just for the sake of somebody <laughs> All right so there are many lessons and many other characters about whom we will discuss in detail but today is the short video because i have to go somewhere i don't have much time <laughs> all right so that is it from my side if you are new then please subscribe and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below okay and until next time with another character from the ramayana or the mahabharat or from the bhagavata maybe okay wish you good luck god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him Bye bye see you